Welcome to the Let Go and Be Free podcast, a podcast for those who grew up in an alcoholic or dysfunctional family. I'm your host, Ron Vital, author of the Let Go and Be Free series for adult children of alcoholics. On this podcast, we'll talk about everything from dealing with ruminating thoughts to stopping dysfunctional behaviors that you learned as a child. Together, we'll shine a light to dispel any shame you might feel about your upbringing and learn practical tips that will help you live a healthier life. If you'd like to learn more, feel free to visit letgoandbefree.com. And welcome to this week's episode. I wanted to uh, focus this week on the past and how to let go from what happened to you when you were a kid. You know, thinking through if you grew up in an alcoholic or dysfunctional family, a lot of those thoughts can be kind of ruminating in your head. A lot of, I wish this, or I wish that, or if things would have happened differently to me, a lot of anger might be, you know, welled up within you of how you were treated as a kid. A lot of memories, some repressed memories, a whole bunch of things kind of going on. And um, that foundation in your brain of what happened to you when you were a kid, you carry with you, you know, some people say, oh, that's, you know, the baggage that you carry. All of us have a quote unquote baggage that we bring with us, you know, to relationships. And, you know, the the question is, what are you going to do with all of that? As you go about the world and you compare yourself with others, it's, it's a natural thing to do as you grow up and you look at other families and, And kind of look over there and be like, why is their family different than my family? You know, why do they have, you know, a a loving family and mine is filled with, you know, pain and confusion and, you know, shameful secrets and all kinds of things. Um, That that's a uh, that's a complicated (laughs) process as a kid to kind of go through that. And then to, to compare yourself with others, you know, I've been in circumstances where, um, you know, I, I've had things happen to me in the sense that I'm, you know, would be growing up in school and, and, you know, kids would make fun of me for, you know, what I wore or, you know, the fact that I had glasses, you know, kids, uh, unfortunately kids can be very cruel, you know, to each other. And that's something that, you know, when I was growing up, I never quite could understand, um, you know, people who bullied other people, you know, in, in, in my, in my brain, you know, what was happening is that, you know, growing up in the environment that I did, I used school, you know, as a means to kind of escape and get away, you know, education was a, was a way out for me. Education was a way to broaden my horizons, broaden my experiences, um, you know, in, in, I guess, some way to feel better about myself, you know, getting good grades, having teachers that liked me, you know, that's, that's where my brain kind of tended. And the reason for that is that it felt good, you know, was getting positive stimuli. My, you know, my grandparents, my uncle, my, my mom, you know, they were all, very appreciative of like, oh, you're doing great in school, keep doing, you know, great in school, Um, you know, and then that was a means through which I was able to succeed and kind of rise above everything else that was happening in my life, you know, so I guess when we take a look at this, how to let go of that past, there is a, there's a, I guess, many different ways to go through that the one thing is you can refuse to let go of your past and you can let it, you know, kind of run you. And then everything that you come against, um, you can measure it up against who you, who you were as a kid and how you're either fighting against that or wanting to reside, you know, rise up above that. It, there's always this like touchstone in your head of, yeah, well, I don't want to repeat those mistakes. I don't want to this, I don't want to that. Or, you know, you're you're constantly trapped by things that were outside of your control. And if you're not choosing to face them, you know, deal with them, process them, 
then you could inadvertently start to go through and repeat those same mistakes either by and that's a common thing someone you know was raised by either one or two parents that were alcoholics then they become alcoholic themselves or they take on other addictive personality traits and that's you know that's the danger of like going through and and you know seeing that happen generations of like families in which you know someone was raised by someone who was an alcoholic or addicted to drugs and then that person falls to that to themselves and then their children and there's this ongoing process of pain and suffering so for you to be able to rise up you know above it i guess the question to start off with that foundational question is do you want to rise up above it do you want to you know feel better do you want to find a way to live a different life do you choose a different path um that first question in your brain i would expect that you know when you were a kid you came up against that and either you fought with that in your head or you embraced the past and you felt that maybe there was no hope so i guess that's an essential question you know that most likely you've struggled with all your life and then there are the some of those that are you know in a situation where no matter how you try you just keep falling back into that same pattern again and there is no escape at least you think there that there is no escape so for me you know with my past with what happened after my parents divorced there was a lot of shame you know that that I carried with me shame that I grew up in a family that was broken that there is you know damage there that there was something that happened that was unspeakable that i couldn't tell the story of what happened in my family because others would shy away from that and and treat me differently they would look at me as though i was broken and something wrong with me and i carried that with me for a long time and i also carried a lot of hate you know toward my father and anger um, frustration and a lot of emotions that kind of welled up you know within me there were things that i wish i could have overcome but i i just didn't have the tools to do it um, one of the things that i realized is that the harder that i tried to distance myself from that past the more problems that i had and that might seem um I guess counterintuitive you know if you think about it like well why is that and i guess from my perspective and what i've learned along the way is i never felt like i had the right tools when i was a kid you know to overcome you know my past it, it wasn't things were a lot different in the uh late 70s and early 80s it's not like your family went through a difficult you know circumstance there's divorce and then you know you you went to therapy you had it you have an opportunity to talk with someone a professional that can help guide you you know with your emotions and what to deal with them and and how to process them you know and, and how to take a better path like what different skills what different little activities i could have done to be able to help me there, there was none of that um, you know, for me back in the, in the late seventies and the eighties, and maybe the same thing for you where that path just didn't exist of you went through something that was traumatic and, you know, you didn't have that opportunity to talk to someone and, and go to therapy. And with that being the case, I, you know, I did the best that I could. I tried to figure out how to move forward, but I did have that burning like hatred of what happened you know with my father and i i resented him and hated him and swore my, to myself up and down that i would never become like him and by going through that and then getting through school and uh, meeting friends and seeing their families and seeing their fathers there was that thought of why can't i have something like this you know uh 
why can't I have a father who will, you know, take me to a baseball game or teach me how to throw a ball or um, be there for me, you know, when I'm sick or any of those things. And the more as a kid that I kind of rallied against that, of like railed my thoughts against that, the worse that I was making my own life to be, it's, it's kind of trying to think of, uh, like a similar, you know, like analogy in that I was wanting, you know, like a goldfish to be able to come out of the water and breathe and walk around. And I know that might be a weird, you know, analogy, but it was like, I was wanting the impossible, you know, something that just was never going to happen. And I kept wanting that to happen. And the more that I would spend my energy and time and focus on that, the worse things would be because it was, it was spending energy on the impossible. I wasn't going to be able to change the past and I wasn't going to be able to change the present. I had no control over any of that. And I spent a lot of time, you know, thinking about that, being angry about that, wanting things to be different, wanting, um, you know, my father to turn around and do the right thing and, you know, pay child support and, you know, just, just things to be better. And that never came to be. It, it just wasn't reality. And that was hard, you know, to accept as a kid because, you know, growing up, you know, you, you, you're, you're trying to process all these things and it was hard enough with the divorce, but then to know what happened within those shameful stories you know, that you, you don't want anyone to know about. You, you've got them buried within you. They're repressed within you. What do you do with them? How do you overcome them? And then when you start forming relationships and friendships and you're, you're kind of testing the waters of trust, of who can you trust? Can you trust yourself? Can you trust others? How do you go about setting boundaries? What if there were no boundaries and you didn't even know what a damn boundary was? How do you overcome any of that? So... Um, you know, for me, the, what I realized was, and again, I am not a professional and I, I say this, you know, in, in all my work, I'm sharing my life story and what worked for me may not necessarily work for you. I always recommend that if you're struggling, talk with a professional, but I share my story in the hopes that maybe something that I share will generate a seed of an idea of something of a possibility of a way out, of a better way of life, a better way of dealing with one's past. So for step one, for me, it was simply, do I want to feel better? You know, do I want to? Do I want to make that decision to deal with what happened to me in the past and my family and overcome that? Is that a yes? And I think what was even more complicated is that the history in many of our histories, if you grew up in an alcoholic, you know, or dysfunctional family, you might have been raised in multiple families. You know, there may have been your birth father, and then maybe you had a stepfather like with me, and then you have all the challenges and tribulations that came from that. And then maybe you lived with another, you know, your grandmother or grandparents like I did. And then that's a whole other, you know, circumstance. So I've always looked at my past is I've had three families and, you know, the time that my mom and father and I were married, the time in which we moved in with my grandparents, and then a third, you know, circumstance where my mother remarried and the relationship, you know, we all had with my stepfather. And then when that marriage uh, was dissolved and divorce and annulment came out of that, then we moved back in with my grandparents. And so that, that is a very complicated process of trying to figure out one's identity and dealing with, you know, all that stress and things that I, you know, I dealt with. How, how do you rise up above that? Step one, making the decision that you want to be able to do that. You know, you want to rise up above. And step two for me is learning the process of letting go of the past. 
you know, how do you let go of something that you don't have the ability to fix or control? And that's the key phrase there is control. If we go through life trying to manipulate and control things to make us feel better, we're not going to be able to rise up above what happened to us in the past. I'll say that again. The more that you try to control things, the less control you actually have. That's, a, I think, a, a more succinct way of saying it. What I've learned is letting go you know, of the past and of those hooks that were in us and embracing that past, embracing it in the sense of, you know, I've, I've talked about this before, having that visualization of you going back, thinking of yourself as a young child, and now you as an adult going up to that young little kid, giving that kid a hug and saying, I am here for you now. That's the most that we're able to do. You know, we can't go through a time machine and go in the back and fix things and you know, even in the present, if one of our parents, whomever, you know, whatever the, the circumstance is in your, in your personal life, that person, you know, can't really come back and be like, oh, I'm so sorry for everything I've done. And let's go back in time and I'll fix it all. It's just not possible. You can't undo all those memories and all those situations. Um, so what you can do, though, is, is that you can learn to overcome those circumstances. And that takes time. And it takes responsibility for you in the present and accountability that you realize that one, you can't fix whatever happened within your family. If you're one, let's say, we'll just for argumentative sake, let's say if it was your father that was the alcoholic and let's say he still is, there's nothing you can do to change that. You know, even if he is on the path of recovery now, you still can't go back in the time and time machine and fix things that happened back then. You know, if you are remembering horrible stories, those stories are kind of burned within your neural pathways and you've got them buried within you and you carry them, you know, so much so that there may be situations where, you know, in the present, if people are drinking, you might feel uh, uncomfortable or triggered or worried that someone's going to go outside of, you know, the normal boundaries of a social situation with drinking. And that makes you feel uncomfortable and brings up a lot of memories that, you know, you're trying to understand, like, why are you feeling a certain way at this party? You know, if, if someone's getting out of hand, they're slurring their speech and they're drinking and there's yell, yelling or shouting, that uncomfortable feeling is, is, you know, being triggered from something that you remembered when you were a kid and you don't want to be in that circumstance, you know, potentially. Again, I'm using as an example. I know for me, anytime I was in a in a situation and growing up, you know, as late teens, early 20s, if I was at a party, um, you know, and people were going, getting out of control of drinking, I'd have like a beer or two. And then I'd be like, okay, I'm done with this. And then people would just be like, you know, drinking like it was going out of style like they had nothing better to do and they just were drinking to get drunk and people would yell and scream and you know there are a couple parties you know in my uh, college years that I had went to and I made a decision I'm like this is not fun for me I am not enjoying this um, I don't want to be part of this I'm out of here and I you know made it a decision not to take part in those kind of you know, situations and being, being in that kind of environment. I realized that what I experienced as a kid, now that I was a young adult, I had the control to be able to say, I don't like this. I don't want to do this. I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to come to these kind of parties. I'm going to go do other things that I find that are enjoyable to me and that I like. And that step of letting go of the past of saying I have a boundary when I'm in a certain circumstance if people start to get out of control I can't control their drinking or their drug taking or whatever they're doing but I can say to myself hey let's get out of here I, I don't want to be here this is not something that I find fun and then I would go and go do other things and I would make certain that you know as I was growing up 
the the friends that I surrounded myself with, I gravitated toward those that I felt like I could trust, that I could be with. I didn't want to be around with the party crew, you know, in in, in growing up in high school and college, there's, there tends to be, you know, kids that want to overdo like drinking and, and experimentation with drugs. That's not something that I ever wanted to do. I just saw that as I, I don't really need to do that. I just find that to be uncomfortable. So I had to set my own boundary level with you know, alcohol and drugs. For me, I just never wanted to do drugs. You know, I, I, I don't say that with like a chip on my shoulder. It's just, I kind of saw what, you know, things happened in, in my own past. And I just, I, I guess if I'm honest, I never wanted to be in a situation that a chemical would make me lose control of my own, like, power of brain and, and like, you know, my mind. Um, you know, you, you've heard so many stories when I was growing up of somebody was drinking, you know, and, you know, they were with their girlfriend and things went too far kind of thing. And, you know, and then see stories on the news of like a woman being raped and horrible stories. And, and I just said to myself, I, I don't want to be in a circumstance where I don't have the ability to say, no, I don't want to do this anymore. This is not fun. I had to define for myself what that level of comfort was. You know, once I was, you know, 21 and can go for a drink, you know, go to a bar, go out, restaurant, I would say, you know what? I could have like one drink. I'd have a drink with dinner and that was it. I was fine with that. And that, that that's that's what was fine with me. Um, you know, what you choose to do is different. But defining that process of how are you going to let go of the past and what are the boundaries that you set up in your own life is really important as you move forward and find a way to heal you know and and if you're in a relationship what are those boundaries with your partner if they're in contrast that could create lots of problems you know if if you're like oh i want to go to a party and i just want to stay for a couple hours and oh it's starting to get a little out of control i'm out of here But if your partner's like, no, I want to join in, like, I mean, those things have to be navigated and discussed, um, you know, in advance before going to a party. And that might sound weird, like, well, why would you do that? Well, (laughs) the reason why you would do that is if the person that you're with understands your history and you shared anything about, you know, what you grew up with, I would hope that you have some kind of an, uh, an agreement or understanding with that person of, you know, what your threshold is, what your level of comfort is. And if you don't, then the question that I have is, why haven't you had that conversation with, you know, the person that you're in a relationship with? So a lot of what I've learned is that responsibility for yourself. You know, when you were a kid, you may have been in circumstances where no one stood up for you. You know, you saw things that and or things, you know, experienced things that you should never have experienced, Um, you know that's horrible but unfortunately you can't go back in time you can't fix those things you can process them and work with therapy to be able to overcome that and that takes time you can go to adult children of alcoholics meeting that also takes time journal writing self-discovery all those things all the different steps of what you know what you can do the different various paths to overcome what you grew up with but here in the present what are you doing for yourself? And that's the another key piece is that if you let go of the past, then accepting accountability for the present is is next. And so what I mean by that is what kind of circumstances do you allow yourself to be in? Who are the people that you allow yourself to be involved with? If you are in a relationship where someone is repeating those same patterns that took place in the past or you are repeating those same patterns, you know, drinking or drugs or abuse or whatever, then are you really overcoming that past or are you just reliving things? Are you just repeating those patterns? Accepting the responsibility that you are responsible for your own actions is critical. And then there's also the future. You know, either if you have children or even if you don't have children, 
your future. What do you want your future to be like? You know, do you want to be in a future situation where the past is just being repeated and then you're stuck in that like time loop? Or are you building and working and going on the journey of understanding who you are, letting go of the past, finding ways of forgiving yourself for, you know, things that have happened that you had no control of and building the communication skills and tools no matter what that is is it meditation is it praying is it therapy is it going to adult children of alcoholics meaning what are you doing so that in the future you're setting yourself up for success that's part of the process of letting you know the past go because in order to get to that future how are you going to let go of the past And it might sound like a paradox. It's like, well, if you are in the future and you're still worrying about the past, have you really let go of it? You know, if you're in a circumstance, use a very simple story of if you are invited to go to a party and you have friends and your friends, you know, want to drink more than you do. Do you stand up for yourself? Do you give yourself the boundary level of saying, hey, I just don't feel like doing this tonight. You know, I don't feel like being here. I'm going to go do my own thing. Or I've been here long enough. I'm going to go home. You know, and you might say, well, but, but my, you know, the, my partner wants to stay later. They can do whatever they want to do. You know, standing up for yourself does not mean that you either have to force them to do what you want to do, you know, or you give in and just go along with whatever they're doing. If you don't want to drink or you don't want to be in a situation where there's unhealthy behaviors going around, you don't have to. Or, you, you know, you might say, I, you know, you're in a circumstance where you're in conflict with somebody. How are you going to resolve that conflict? A lot of it is tied into how we argue and discuss with people our feelings is tied into our memories from like what we used to do or what we saw our family do when we were kids and by processing all of that healing from that and moving on it takes a lot of work it's like um learning how to communicate is essential so for example there's a book and i have to look up the quote I, I have it upstairs. It's on my monitor, and I'll, I'll put this in the, sh- in the show notes. Um, instead of when you're angry at somebody and then yelling at somebody, I, you know, like, then saying, like, you did this, you this, you that, you know, common knowledge is say, I statements, I feel this, I feel that. But the next step above that is if you're angry at somebody and angry in a situation, to focus on what that really is you say i need x because at the end of the day really what's happening in the argument is you might feel a certain way but what are you really needing in that moment and that helps get to the core sense of a problem so instead of you're arguing and you're going in circles with someone and there's you know you're carrying the baggage of the past of what you saw your parents do in arguing and now you're in the present and you're arguing with a spouse or a sibling or whatever a friend and you can't get out of that circumstance you know if you're yelling at each other or arguing or pressing and you're just like really upset to get through that understanding what you need is going to help you overcome that by saying you do this you do that that's not going to solve anything because if you've tried that, you know the other person gets defensive and then arguments come up again. But when you say, I feel a certain way, you know, I, I am angry, I'm this, and then you, you come to the core of it. I need to go now because I don't feel comfortable at this party. I need to go now because I don't feel comfortable of whatever, or I need to be held, or I need someone who can hear me. I need... What exactly do you need in that moment? And are you asking that person to give that to you? Are you asking yourself to give it to yourself? What is that? That's where that accountability is and where we learn to let go of the past, where we realize what happened to us as kids and what we saw our parents go through, we can't fix. But in the present, 
with the right skills, the right tools of being able to process what happened to us and in the moment how to process our emotions and our feelings, it allows us to go in a different you know, level to be able to solve problems, communicate effectively, and give ourselves what we were never able to get in the past. We are responsible for ourselves. We cannot control others. We are responsible and accountable for our our own actions. And I think the sooner that we realize that and learn the various tools and skills, communication vehicles that get us out of circumstances where we're not repeating the past, the better. So I, I do hope this episode has been helpful for you because letting go of the past is not an easy thing. You know, we might want to, we might think that we did, but, you know, we might fall back into that, you know, past and ruminating on those thoughts. And the best way to overcome that is acknowledging that we want to overcome the past, put in the work to overcome it, learn what those skills are to overcome and put them into practice. And then it just takes time. So thank you again for listening to this podcast. I appreciate it. If you'd like to learn more, visit letgoandbefree.com. You can sign up for the free newsletter there. Share this podcast with others um, to help get the word out. And I hope you have a great week. And as always, be well.